Welcome. In this video, we'll explain what's changed in FL Studio version 20.8.1 to 20.8.3. We'll talk about changes in plugins, then UI changes and workflow updates. There's over 20 new features and changes to discuss, so we better get started. Let's jump straight in with plugin updates. Maximus. We added the same input selector as Parametric EQ2 for improved visualizations in the menu here. You can now monitor mid, side, left and right channels. Parametric EQ2. Right clicking the frequency knobs now shows the same note frequency options previously only available by right clicking band tokens. Z-Game Editor Visualizer. You can now include audio in your preloaded video to play back with the video. Also, when exporting, you can now use the new Post Master Audio option, so the master audio can be used with a video exported from a Z-Game Editor Visualizer, loaded on any mixer track and effects slot without the mixer track effects. In FPC, pads can now be cloned by clicking and dragging from one pad to another. Finally, I can make the perfect drum set. The control surface and patcher can now change the color of the scroll bar in the keyboard control. Instrument Tuner. The response time can now be fine-tuned with a knob for more precision when detecting the pitch of shorter samples, like 808 style bass kicks. Keyboard Controller. The preview keyboard now displays active notes by lighting up. Panomatic. Internal LFO modulation is now shown on the XY control display. Whee! FL Studio Mobile has been updated to version 3.5, including an improved sampler, a new gate plugin, and more. In an ongoing program, more plugins now support context-aware inputs for the type-in value dialog, including Fruity Granulizer, Parametric EQ2, 3X Oscillator, and FL Keys. Great, now we'll talk about changes to the user interface. We've increased the maximum width of the mixer, so all tracks can be shown without having to scroll, assuming your monitors are wide enough. The maximum width of the touch keyboard now depends on the key size. That means no more borders on the extra small setting. The time stretching panel in the channel settings Help! now shows which stretch mode is used below the mode menu when auto is in use. Help! File size warning. We've improved the project size warning dialog to be clearer about file types and their sizes. Nice. Now it's time to see user experience and workflow updates. First up, Apple M1 users rejoice. FL Studio now runs on Apple Silicon M1 CPUs under Rosetta 2 with improved performance. Speaking of performance, the performance monitor can now be opened by double clicking the CPU panel. We've also added a search bar to focus on a specific plugin. Mm -hmm. 
MIDI scripting continues to be expanded with more commands to control FL Studio from MIDI controllers. Check out the MIDI scripting section in our user forum for updated scripts. In the Picker panel, you can now ungroup the selected patterns from your display filter group by right-clicking them and choosing to ungroup selected. Language options. FL Studio will now show a warning message on exit if the user changed the language and didn't restart when prompted. Right-click the pattern and song mode switches to open the channel rack or the playlist respectively. We've also changed the few controls. Notably, the helper options in the piano roll have been added to the view menu. To prevent frequent hand cramps or having to use your mouse hand for keyboard input, we've changed paste value in some menus from P to V. If you didn't know, every shortcut function in an FL Studio menu has an underlined letter. Before we go, you can now copy the first color to the last color in the gradient selector and vice versa. Enjoy updated open and save dialogues all throughout the program and the visualizer now throws up a warning when you're trying to export uncompressed video. And with that, we hope you'll love FL Studio 20.8.3 just as much as we love your lifetime free updates.